the research trip that we did to Austin and the to the Harry Ransom Center. And, and initially that trip was to see if we could see a copy that they have of uh, Peter, Paul and Mary, The Song is Love, um, which is Hooper's documentary on the group, um, also kind of highly political documentary about the times. Some clippings, reviews of um, the Peter, Paul and Mary documentary were particularly uh, useful because I think that, that documentary, which had been, well, well really remains lost uh, in the sense that uh, it's not available to the public, um, really brings together so many of the themes that would come later in Hooper. And we're talking about a documentary that was made between um, what, 1968, 1970? Yeah. Um, so it was after his experimental first film, Eggshells, first feature length film, Eggshells, but before the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Here's this documentary about Peter, Paul, and Mary by the guy who's about to make Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, this is the Holy Grail. This is the thing that we're, we're so any, anybody interested in Toby Hooper should be interested in this documentary about Peter, Paul, and Mary. <laughs> and we, we spend a lot of time in the introduction and um, in several of our um, of the essays in the book um, kind of analyzing that, that documentary, um, which Chris was fortunate enough to, to locate a digitized copy of. And um, it really brought the whole thing together. Uh, along with those newspaper clippings, which um, on Peter, Paul, and Mary, which were really, um, they, they made it into the, the book, like the, we quote them <laughs> frequently because they really give a lot of um, a, a sense of how Hooper sees his, his directorial style, which is, um, I don't think he even called himself uh, a director on Peter, Paul, and Mary, he called himself a designer. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he saw that film as a as, a, as an art piece, um, not, you know, about Peter, Paul and Mary, but about something else. Um, and what it ends up being about is artistic freedom and, and, and the politics of the civil rights movement woven together and the, the ability to speak your mind and, and, and have agency in, in what you want to say. And Hooper's entire career just extends from a moment like that. He could not have foreseen it, but he's so almost you know, uh, kind of prescient in the, in the sense that he already is aware that he's going to have trouble as a visionary artist with future projects. Um, but I, I think that there's some things that didn't make it into the book that I think are really fascinating that we learned in the archive were things like uh, a letter from William Friedkin, the director of The Exorcist, uh, recommending Hooper for the sequel to The Exorcist. And then we do mention uh, like the, the half-smoked cigar and a, and a bag of little bone chippings that we saw in there. And, and it, it, you know, it's just like these kinds of weird, this weird collection of things that he thought, you know, electric bills and bones. You know, <laughs> so like this is Hooper, you know, this is a and it was a real sense of of the of the person that was behind that, too. And but just just what we learned about kind of the eclectic aspect of, of Hooper, I think, does make it into the book and, and resonates through all the, the essays as well. So I think the archive really brought together for me an, a, an appreciation of the, of the work that preceded us, uh, Christopher Sherritt. Tony Williams, who are both uh, in the collection, Nikita Brotman, um, and Joe Bob Briggs, John Bloom, all four of those um, folks, you know, wrote about uh, Toby Hooper, wrote about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and really recognized its importance not just as a as a film, but as a work of art, as a major work of art. Yeah. Um, and Toby Hooper as a major, um, if undervalued, artist. And, you know, it, 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 it also involved, you know, we've got the Austin, Texas crowd, and then we've also got these, these two guys in California who helped us see the film. And that, that was through some contacts in Toronto. And, and, you know, it just, it like, it's a really huge community of, of folks who, who just love Hooper and who, you know, as whether they're fans or fan scholars or working in an archive, they, they, there's a, was a real sense of, 
reverence and and respect everywhere we went to ask questions they not everybody knew what we needed to know but um but they were all so so sort of thrilled that we were doing this project and and we're thrilled that it's that it's seen the light of day so 